Hi, I'm Heather. I'm one of the systems engineers here at Pessler. Today in this tutorial, we're going to talk about notifications. Notifications is, in PRTG terms, the alerts that you get from the monitoring software. We're going to discuss it in two ways. First of all, I'm going to go over the physical ways you get notified. We call that a notification template. There are many ways you can get notified, and I'll review all of them with you. Then we're going to talk about notification triggers. That's what's actually going to set off the notification to come to you. All right, let's take a look at our notification settings in PRTG. If you hit setup, we can go into the notification delivery section. This is where you could set up your SMTP delivery and your SMS delivery. So under here, you could see by default is direct delivery with the built-in email server, but if you prefer or if that's your organization's um, way of doing it, you can use an SNMT, I'm sorry, an SMTP relay server here, and you would just put in the relevant settings for that. If you do choose to use an SMS delivery provider, you would come to this bottom section and put in the information for your SMS relay service. Notification contacts under the setup screen are the email address for the devices of push notifications and phone numbers. A PRTG user who is currently logged in defines their notification contacts. Notification contacts are unique for each user account. That is, every user of a PRTG installation can individually define how they want to get notified by PRTG. Recipients of notifications are their email addresses, phone numbers, and push devices. Now let's talk about the notification templates. Notification templates are the settings on how you're going to be notified. After we go through the notification templates, we're going to talk about notification triggers, which is going to, talk, which is going to show how you're going to actually be notified on what. So here is the notification templates. Once we go in here, I'm going to say add new notification template and let's go through the settings. You're going to give your notification template a name and you'll use that later when you set up your notification triggers. In here, if you want to add a tag, you can and set a schedule. If you do set a schedule, that's going to be when the notification template is active. So if the schedule has times outside the schedule, the notification template will not be active then. Here you can see various options for notification summarization. So if you do want to hear, set all messages to notify SAP, you can do that, but then there can be summarizations for multiple notifications. And of course, uh, the subject for summarized emails you could set on this line. You could set access rights to the template for who can access the template. Now down here, this is the important parts here, the means for the notifications. We can send an email to a user or a group. For the user, you'll select that user in PRTG with the user notification contact settings. You can also send it to an individual email address if you prefer. So if I want to send to, for example, heather at gmail.com, I could. We also have the option to send to user groups. These are user groups defined in PRTG. And with a user group, you can also send to an Active Directory distribution list. Within send email, you could set a subject and use wildcards also. So you can have, with wildcards, you can make it more personalized to what you might need per the alert. The format can be HTML, text, or text with custom content, and also you could set your priorities. Send push notification uses our mobile app with your Android and iOS devices. So here you would select to the user you want to use and if you want to send to one person in your notification contacts, or you could choose the user groups and they will be users that have push notifications defined. And also you can, for your message, use wildcards in the message as well. Send to SMS pager is if you do have an SMS relay service defined in PRTG. Again, you can use user or user groups depending upon how you have it set or you can just enter one number in here as well. And set your messages um, with the wildcards in here. One of the newer features is to send Slack messages. So you'll see in here, you could put your URL of your Slack webhook in here, sender name, title, and subtitle, and content. 
Now, keep in mind as I'm going through this, your notification template can contain multiple means of notifications. So I'm showing you these one-on-one, -on -one, but if you wanna do a Teams message and an email, you can. A push notification with an email is common, and so on. So you can have multiple, one, or all of these in one notification template. So with Microsoft's Teams messages, you would just put your URL of the Teams webhook in here, as long with your title, subtitle, and content. So the next three are send to event log, send syslog message, or SNMP trap. So if you have any of those types of servers in your environment and you do want to send messages to them, PRTG gives you the option to send all those as long as you have the information to fill out to send to the server you have on site. Now, execute HTTP action and execute program are running an action or a script based upon the notification triggers, which is what we're gonna look at next. So with execute HTTP action, you do put the URL for the action in here and then put your HTTP method. For execute program, you will have to put your script on the server, your PRTG server ahead of time and then in the scripts directory, and then you would just select your script from here and then put in any appropriate parameters or you could, if you need to also put in credentials, you would put them down here at the bottom part. If you use Amazon Simple Notification Services, we have options in here. If you put in your AWX, AWS Access Key ID and your secret access key in here to send through there. The last one is assign a ticket. PRTG does have a ticketing system built into it. It is not a full-blown help desk ticketing system, but I like to call it a process flow. So if you have something that's not emergent, my favorite example is disk space warnings and you do not want your email box or your phone blowing up, you can use the ticketing system and add a ticket here. If a human does not come in and look at the tickets, you don't know it's there. So keep that in mind if you put that in as your only um, notification in your notification template. So once we come in here to the notification template, you set up the ways you want to be notified, say create, it gets created, and we have our template. Okay, now that we have created our notification templates, let's set some notification triggers. The notification triggers are set on the main view of your device tree. Anything you set at root, which we're gonna set the first one to flow down to everything in your device tree, but you could set them at the probe, group, device, or sensor level. So just click on the notifications triggers tab. There are five types of triggers, state, speed, volume, threshold, and change. The state trigger is based upon the state of the sensor, and you can control the state of the sensor in the channel limits. So you may wanna watch the video on how to set channel limits if you wanna see how you can control the sensor states. So when we come here and edit the state trigger, you could see when sensor state is down, warning, unusual, up, partial down or unknown, for a period of time, 60 seconds, so this is one minute, but you can make that whatever time you need, perform, and this is where we're gonna select our notification trigger. Then you could do when sensor state is down for at least, and this is your secondary level notification, so 300 seconds, so this is five minutes, you could do 600 seconds or 10 minutes or whichever makes sense to you. Perform, and you could pick the same notification group or a different notification group. And then you could say, do a repeat for every so often. So if you want to keep repeating every 10 minutes till it's looked at, you can do that. And then you could say when sensor leaves that particular state, which is for us the down state, um, perform, and you could do a notification um, template to choose there for the condition cleared. And you can save that. Now that's gonna flow down to every level in my device tree. If you don't wanna rely on the sensor state or changing channel limits, but you wanna be notified on a speed, volume, or threshold, you could set those triggers here. So I could say, let's add speed trigger, and I can say, if primary total traffic in or out is, and then you choose above, below, equal, or not equal to, define your speed criteria that you wanna have and then put the period of time you want it to run in. So I could say 10 minutes, perform, and you select your notification template here. And then you can do a condition clear. For these ones, there are not um, any secondary levels. The state triggers the only one that has that. And I can say save. 
And then we could do the same thing for volume. You could say when primary total traffic in or out has reached and you would set your volume criteria. And then there's also, I'm going to cancel that one, and there is the threshold criteria. Now for threshold, you're only going to get primary and total because there are many sensors with different channels that you could set thresholds on. And we're going to take a look at that closely in a few moments. But you could do primary or total, then again, above, below, equal or not equal to your period of time, pick your notification template, and then your condition clear. The last one, which we haven't talked about yet, is the change trigger. The change trigger is any time a sensor changes, it's going to send you a notification if you have, have it selected. So you're not going to use this so often, and especially at root, because this will drive you nuts with notifications, to be honest. So here you just set your notification template for the change of the sensors. One of the favorite use case scenarios I have for the change trigger is if you are monitoring, for example, a Windows service, and maybe it's your Exchange service, and it stops and restarts, perhaps there you want to be notified that your Exchange service restart because that's critical. That's a good use case for the change trigger if you need to use that. So now we were defining everything here at the root. Now I did mention to you earlier that we can set notifications at any level in the device tree. So let's come down here a little bit. Let's go through OS, and let's say, you know, for my Windows, I'm at the WMI group here. So I scroll down to this group of my device tree, I can hit notification triggers. Now you can see I have a few separate boxes here. I can go ahead and define any of my triggers right here on it, and then it could say inherit all triggers from parents and use triggers defined above or only use triggers defined above. So if I want to turn off the inheritance, I can turn off inheritance and just define on my group, or I can have everything inherited from above and define as well. So here, if I come into threshold trigger, I'm going to see still that primary and total because I'm at a group, but I can go ahead and define a trigger. Now, before we get into a few other means of notifications, let's talk about that threshold trigger. Let me pick a good one here that I might like to do and show you. Let's go into the probe health and then I'm going to go into my notification triggers and add threshold trigger. Now notice the difference. When I go to my threshold trigger instead of primary and total, I'm actually getting all of my sensor channels in here. So this is a way I can get granular with the threshold triggers on the sensor. So I could pick here interval delay for SNMP and then I could say above, below, equal or not equal to. Um, I could set my criterias, you could do your period of time, and then again set your notification template, and then the condition clear. So the notification trigger is right on the sensor itself. Now notice here too, there is a third option that appear. It's because we have notification triggers, triggers inherit from the parents, and see this other one? Triggers that are defined in library objects. A library objects is a collection of a sensors. So everything in the device tree is a top-down hierarchy. I like to call this my horizontal view. So for example, I can do a library with all my disk space sensors. So no matter where these sensors are at in my device tree, whatever group or probe, they're in a library and I can see them all. So if I have my employee who is in charge of all disks and he just wants notifications on disk space sensors, I can create a library with those sensors and do a notification trigger based upon the library. So I can come in here and I can add a state trigger and define all my criteria just to him. So that is the other way to do a notification. The last thing I want to discuss about notifications is our desktop client. If you use the desktop client instead of the web interface, you can have notifications on it. If you hit file and settings in the desktop client, and the notifications button here. You can say if you want to have notifications shown um, in your tray, to have it blink, automatically start the tray on boot if you want to use that, and then you could set sounds also if you want to have sound warnings with the desktop client. If you find this video helpful, feel free to like it and consider watching our other videos on our channel. If you still have questions, please contact support at pestler.com. And always feel free to comment for feedback or suggestions for other topics. Thank you.